Hello, I've just been informed that if you wish to look fly like Ella and myself, then you should click your way to creative.com. On this website is remarkable designs, t-shirts, jackets, hats, hoodies, sweatpants, and more to come. We also have courses if you're looking to advance in your musical endeavors. Once you visit our website, it's pretty awesome. But once you make a buy, it's remarkable. It supports the channel and me. Please don't tell El if I said that, but he has not paid me yet. So bye, bye away. Let's continue this journey in creating a movement of creatives around the world that can create with their inner creative juices. Musicians, music producers, beat makers, singers, club promoters, whomever you are in this industry. Join me while we expand. As Ella always says, stay creative without rules. But I have another saying. May the creative forces be with you. I made it up myself. Some people may think I'm Ella, but I'm really not Ella. He doesn't look anything like me. This commercial is now over. Back to the video. What's up, Creative Faces? Your boy L up on set from Creative Sound. We are live right now, and we have man, we have a, a dope session today. And uh I am still trying to set up, so I apologize to you guys I'm starting late. We we uh <laughs> it's always something that goes wrong on these uh these live sessions, but uh we're gonna get it. So I need to get to my questions right quick so i can see you guys come in so as usual as usual if you have any any questions all right cool i got them i think all right still loading but while it's loading, you guys have any questions or whatever, please feel free throughout the stream. And in in uh in good spirits of this of this stream, we're gonna go through some some of the kits that was designed by your boy Snot Young. So from the machine, let me uh. Move some stuff around.
Mm-hmm. And you guys let me know if y'all can hear that, if you can hear my voice. Because like I say, we've just been having issues a few seconds ago, streaming to Facebook and YouTube at the same time. And I think that's the problem, streaming in one place, more than one place. What's up, Carnell? What's up? What's up? like that so we're going to take a sample like a random sample and print that and then i'm going to use some of the drums from the snipe young kit or kits let me change that take that off All right. Troy, what's up? It's all good. I can hear. Okay, cool. Jersey boy, what's going on?
So that's just a little idea of of working with the the kits from from the Snipe Young pack. I just use a random sample and all of the drums and everything else is from those kits. So the kits that I'm using, just in case y'all had that question, absolutely, I got you. So I got what is it pure? I think that's what I got in here. I got some stuff from uh, the collection from sounds.com which is where you can find most of the kits and I got Golden Kingdom in here which is one of those go-to's those are the only two I have loaded at the moment Appreciate that Jersey boy. Reginald Cole, what's up? What's up, man? So in this stream of doing something a little different, streaming to like 15 million different platforms right now. So I'm gonna be turning my head here and there and trying to like get all of the QA from everywhere. Checking in with my Facebook family. What's good, Facebook? There we go. There's all of the comments. Starting to low in very slowly. Nicole Price, what's up? Quinn, what's up? What's happening? Jermaine. Reggie, you watch me on Facebook and YouTube at the same time. Larry Wild, Larry Rogers, what's up? Tony. Derek G, what's up, man? Yeah, so we got a lot going on right now. Just cook this up right quick in machine. And I'm still trying to get the other questions. Just so we can have a smooth stream, yo. I don't want to leave out any, any questions. I think I got everything. What's up, Jay? Jay Johnson, what's what's cracking? We're gonna we're gonna switch gears. Um yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we gonna keep it moving. So basically on this this stream right here, I am honored to have this brother here with me. And um when I met this dude, it was it was it was crazy. And uh I, I will give props to whom it's due. Um Actually, I, I stumbled across a, a YouTube video he did uh, showing some trip, some some tricks in Studio One, right? And um, based on that, I, I learned a little bit about this dude, and I just thought that he was, uh, you know, one of those, you know, you, you know, those high industry dudes that just, you know, they too good to you know, mingle and, and chat with people, you know what I'm saying? Like link up, collaborate, that type of thing. And um, so it was just one of those things where I just seen on YouTube, okay, all right, whatever. And then my boy, uh, Jay Joss, which is on the stream now. Shout out to him, Jay Joss, Carnell Pickett. Uh, he reached out to me and said, hey man, you know, uh, Snipe Young is uh, using Studio One just like you, right? You should reach out to him. And I'm like, um, okay, 
<laughs> I just I just didn't feel confident. I just I just I just thought it was going to be one of those things where like I would never get to respond, you know, and blah 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 whatever. So I didn't reach out to him per se at that moment, but somehow we crossed platforms and like I was like, "Oh my god, I can't believe this dude is that cool." You know what I mean? And I I think I I appreciated him for not being uh 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 a jackass, you know what I mean? when I met him because there's a lot of people out there that, that does it. So that's why I have him on the stream because he's like a extra super cool dude, but he's done so much in the industry stuff. Y'all don't even know nothing about, but you probably do know. So if any of you guys that are using machine, you know that he built several kits with native instruments and also NPC, the NPC market. If you guys use an NPC, you uh you definitely know that uh there's some kits over there that uh that he provided um and and they all dope <laughs> I haven't went through anything that was like less less of quality but uh yeah so this dude right here he psh, man I'm reading this list of things that he's done okay uh you guys familiar with Empire Fox right you you seen that you you seen uh stars uh. Blackish, you you guys know ABC, right? Um, ran, random stuff, ghost Ghostface Killer, um, Made in Staten Staten Island, Alex Ritchie. There's a super long list, and I'm not gonna go through all that. I'm gonna let him do his thing, and um, yeah, it's it's a super long list. But uh, dude's been in, dude's been out here working, dude's been working. And uh, without further ado, we're gonna uh, bring him in on on Skype, and um, we're gonna get it cracking. Snipe, yo, what, what up, up? What up? What up? What it do? Lep levels good over there. Yes, sir. Okay. Cool, cool. What it do? What up, man? Marco, what's up? Uh, beat on production. Salute, salute. All right. So, um, like, 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 like I said before, you guys have questions, hit us up and I'll just like point out stuff or whatever when we get to that, to that part or whatever. But, uh, yeah, we got the homie right here, Snipe Young, um, from Man, the... so you set me, you set me up, bro. <laughs> what did I do? Hey, everybody, you see how his, his video looks so crispy, clean. <laughs> He set me up. Uh, man, he look good, bro. I'm telling you off the top, bro. Man. Oh, you good, man. You, <laughs> see? Now, now right, my uh my, my my camera is acting up. Yeah. I feel you. <laughs> yeah, man. So like where where are you from? Like like who are you? Where, like who is Snipe? I'm from Birmingham, Alabama, man. I live in California now. I've been out here maybe I think 10, 11 years. That's um what else? Uh, well, I'm a producer, songwriter, engineer, sound designer. I used to be an artist, but yeah. <laughs> I used to sing. Nah, I used to rap. Dope, dope. Used to be a rapper. Yeah, that's what's up. Hook, so man, do hooks and all that type of stuff, man. Yeah, I don't even know where to begin. I'm just like, okay, what do I ask this dude? Like, he done done everything. Um, so like. Like, how did you get started? Like, uh, well, I started out, ironically, I started out playing, like everybody always say, I started out in the church. You know, <laughs> I started out playing the keys in the church. Now, I started out playing drums in church. And um, my mom was a singer in this, in this band. I used to travel around the country. And the musician that used to play for her, her name was Ke um, Cahill. And I used to watch her play the keys all the time, and I wanted to play. And so I, I developed a, a niche to learn by ear. So I would watch them while I was playing the drums. And then I would, after rehearsal, I would go and try to pick out the notes. You know what I'm saying? Like they, what they were singing to and try to play. And she ended up showing me like two or three chords. And from that point forward, I just tried to learn how to create music. Then I got into this gospel hip hop group back in the day. Um, we were called Demon Killers back then. We were involved into a super group called SYF Family with Big Jan Snipe, Executioner, Seven, uh, specialist Sebastian Cole, uh, Sashin, all that. So maintain, I ain't gonna name. There's a bunch of them: Earl, Dan, Chastity. There's a bunch of them. So anyway, we did that, and when we were in the first group, 
our producer ended up going out of town to go to school. He went to Auburn University. And so when he left, we had no way to make um, music because we had to. He was the producer. So we was just like, uh, and I was trying, but I sucked. So <laughs> it was pretty much out of necessity that I started to try to develop a skill set in the production field. So I started working, working, working. All my cats they used to rap with, all the cats used to rap with me. They would sit in the front seat of Big Jen's old school. I think he had a Crown Victoria. Mm-hmm. With the with the book, you know, the long seat where you get three people in the seat. So they would be sitting up there and I'd play my beats. I'd be like, put my tape in there, man. Let me to my beats. Then to my beats. And all you can see when you playing your beats with they in the back of their shoulders, you doing like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cause they laughing at my beats, but they don't want to <laughs> laugh to my face. Right. So they got their <laughs> they facing forward. So I see they they shoulders moving. I'm like, oh, okay, so I'm whack, huh? So I just took that as fuel to try to make people not laugh at what I was doing. And I just kept developing my skill, competing with Timberland, Dr. Dre, all the cats that was at the top, Neptunes, Swiss Beats. And I would never compare myself to the people that was around in my city because they weren't at the plateau where I wanted to go. Not knocking nobody that was around me, but I knew where I wanted to go and I knew where the mark was set to be as uh, to be known as a, a good producer. You had to at least be of this stature. So I used to always compete with the top dogs. And that's how I developed my skill and got better and better at production. And I was writing hooks and stuff back then, too. Wow. That's what's up. So, like, okay. So you started out in church. Same mm-hmm. here. Um, like, what, what, what was it? What was it that sparked? Because I know for me in church, um, I'm a drummer, right? And then, like, I think... I don't know how it happened for me, but I was very interested in learning how to make beats. And there was there was a keyboard, like a sequence of keyboard at church. And so mm-hmm. I got on there and I discovered that, okay, this thing actually records. Okay, that's what's up. And, yeah. and I just got into doing that. So like what was it for you that that like that initial spark? Like uh when 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 the producer that we had left <laughs> <laughs> it was a, it was a necessity. It was, a, and then ironically, the producer is is like one of the top three writers in the world right now. Sebastian Cole is my homeboy, but he ended up going to college. He was the producer that we were using. He was in our group, and when he went to school, everybody else was just like, uh, "Okay, well, the, one of the females that was in the group, she went to school too." So it just left me, another guy, and Big Jen. Big Jen wasn't in school no more. He was he was older than everybody else. So it was like either you're going to figure out how to make the beats. You don't have any money to buy the beats. It's not a music capital. So you're not going to go down the street to the other studio to get some beats. So it was like you either going to pay or you ain't going to rap. So I was like, okay, cool. So I started pretty much like you said, started out on the keyboard. But back then, even though I'm only 21 years old, back then, (laughs) (laughs) back then, we didn't have it like you had like two tiers of keyboards. You had your workstation keyboard, like the the super duper trains and all that. But then you had the ones that didn't have, it had a uh, eight track recorder on it, but it was no loop. So it may be a Casio or something like that. So we didn't have the, the, the luxury to go and make an eight bar. And, oh, that's dope. Let me run that back. You had to play that joint all the way. You know what I'm saying? You had to play every instrument you playing all the way. If it's a three minute song, you got to play it three minutes. You mess up. Either you're going to leave it like that or you're going to start over. And that was you, you doing it that way. Or the other option was to do it from do it on tape. You, re, you play some on a tape, take that tape out, put it in the other tape, record that part, put the tape over there. there you know what I'm saying? Back and forth, swapping the tapes out. So we didn't have the luxury of just pressing eight bar loop, four bar loop, 16 bar, 24. We had that luxury. We had to make it work. And so to have to be to be forced into doing that, it was like a necessity that I had to get better at what I was doing. So it wasn't like a I think I want to try. No, if you was going to do it, you had to be you had to be all in. I'm talking about my dad is a pastor, so I would take the keyboard, the drums, the PA system, and he had a 12 inch like off brand speaker. I would take all that stuff home every Sunday after church and take it and put it in my room. And that was my studio. Wow. <laughs> I had to make it work. We had to make, I made a sub. I didn't have a sub back then. Okay. I made a sub. I made a sub out of a. Remember those toy box speakers? Yeah. Um, not toy box speakers. Those toy box. Um, it was a football, but it was a toy box. You remember those? Yeah. I, yeah. I think I know. It was yeah. shaped like it was. It was made by little tykes. I think. 
I took the top off of that, put a 12 inch, no, a 15 inch woofer in there. Wow. Screwed the woofer on the top, ran the wires through the little holes that was on the side. And that's how we had a sub. So the sub was actually a sub, a, a, a regular sub woofer without the box, made the box out of the toy box. And that's how we had a sub. It was me and my boy Book. That's how we just do it. We had to make it work. It was a necessity. There was no excuses, no options. No, They got this, so we can't make it sound like that. No, if they got this and they made it sound like that, we're going to figure out a way to make it sound like that. So we was, that's, how, that's how we end up developing a bunch of skill sets in that particular uh, time frame. Wow, that's crazy. Is that when when you were saying that that actually brought me back to uh the part where where uh I did the, a similar thing um where my pops had um what was it, six by nine, like speakers that you put in your car. So he had those yeah. like laying around in the in the basement area. I'm from Chicago, yeah. so we got basements out there. And um, yeah. I took them joints and and I connect them all together in my room to create a surround sound with a little sound set up record player. It was a record player. Then I, so I, I routed those joints around the house and just figured that out. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy to hear you say that. So yeah, yeah. So did you ever go to school for music or? Man, I went to I went to UAB University of um, Alabama at Birmingham to try to get into music production but the problem was when i went they i had learned the bare necessities early on like what is midi what is quantized what is this what is that so i'm like uh and then in high school i was i wasn't i wasn't a dummy i was one of the brightest kids in my class so i graduated second in my class so i was always mm. thinking ahead so when you put me in a class like that, it made me feel like I was in a remedial class. So it was like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what is MIDI? You, you, y'all really don't know what MIDI is? What is what is quantized? You really don't know what quantized is? So we was taking quizzes and all that. So I remember I went one, sem one semester in this MIDI production class. I think they called it, um, I forgot what it was called, music. It wasn't even music production. It was, I forgot what it was called. But anyway, they... This was early on. This was like 2000, bro. So it was no like full sale went popping. None of that stuff was popping. So I went to the class and we had our exam and our final exam was to make a track, like make a comp like com make a composition, whatever he said. So I was like, OK, cool. So because I've been doing it for so long with the tape and this and that and other one, when they give me um, not audition, whatever it was, I forgot what the program was back then, but you give me this MIDI keyboard, you give me this computer, and you tell me to make a beat. I'm like, this is a breeze. <laughs> so I'm, here, I'm, I'm snapping, I'm tripling, I'm hot. <laughs> <laughs> All the students looking like, what in the world? So the professor come over there like, oh, you got it. I mean, you you got it. I'm like, bro, this is nothing. But this was the whole semester. So I'm like, bro, I'm paying y'all to show me what I already know. The next semester, they was like, yo, we're going to go into uh, your theory classes and your ensembles and you're gonna have to sing in in the alan St alice stevenson center in the in the chorus i was like mm, time to go <laughs> 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 you're not gonna keep me up there talking about no good morning <laughs> <laughs> no nah, bro you're not gonna get me up there like that so i dipped after that man and I, I just just went head all the way in to head in with the music all the way and ever since i just never looked back it took a lot of sacrifices, but I knew what I wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? Wow. I skipped college for it. I made a 28 on the SAT, I mean the ACT, and I had offers to go anywhere I wanted to go, and I just was like, nah, I want to do music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. At that time, I didn't even realize a 28 was like, whoa, until I got older, and everybody was like, I made a 20, made a 19. I'm like, wait, 28. Right, right. But right. I choked. I, it, my head wasn't even in that. My head was into the music since then, since I was fourteen years old. That's what's up. So, so would you agree that it's not necessarily, not not necessarily, a must to go to school in order to make it? I I went to school for networking. That's kind of all I got out of it. But mm -hmm. some people think you need a degree, um, and that's kind of what. I went to full sale, so like their marketing thing, they 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 push it. Where I mean, mm -hmm. you do need some schooling if if yeah. if it the 
you know, whatever you learn, it is, is very intricate. But yeah. as far as music production, um, I learned a few things, but it's just knowing how to network with people. And that's how I met, you know, a bunch of people. So I, I mean, back, but back then, like I said, full sale and stuff that, that wasn't even around. So it wasn't even an option. Right. Yeah. For, and then back then production and songwriting, like where I'm from. And if people on here, on here from Alabama, Birmingham or whatever, you probably, you may even know it's a Southern thing, but if you say you rap, you do beats, you, you do anything with the music, a uh, older person, they automatically associate that with selling dope. Like as soon as you say I'm I'm a producer, mm, <laughs> what you really do? Right. I write songs. Mm, <laughs> what you really do? You know what I'm saying? It's never like I'm a producer. Oh really? Have you done anything I heard? Like when I came out here, and I was saying the same thing. I do um, music production. First thing people would say, Oh really? What have you done anything I may know? I'm like mm, what? Y'all not jumping back because you think I sell dope. You know what I'm saying? So back back home is the total opposite. Back then, back home, the the job to have is the the lawyer, the doctor, the the um what attorney I mean not attorney, um accountant, all that type of stuff. That's when you get the oh when you have those type of jobs. So back then, going to school was either you're gonna go to school for those things. Or you just gonna go to school and do, and you gonna take business, and we all know how all those business degrees end up. They end up either doing nothing with that degree, or they try to start their own business and they figure out they need to know something else. So <clears throat> nowadays, with the full sale and the um, musician institute, and uh, I mean music institute in LA, I forgot what the other one is. It's a bunch of them out here. It's different because now when you go there, you are you around like minded people. So right. you'll go to this, this this establishment and you have a bunch of other people that will become the next person that does what you do and you build a relationship with them in the root. So you may go you may go to school like me and you were in school together and we became cool and you turn into the next exec at Atlantic that's he's he's over A&R mm-hmm. and I'm still producing. I have a relationship with you because we went to school together. Right. So it's the same type of system that always has gone. It's always been like that in the corporate world. But because of full sale and all these other universities and stuff like that, that incorporated the music technology program into their system, that that same networking that happens for corporate America started happening for the entertainment. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So in that particular aspect, it's, it's cool now. But back then, it wasn't like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know definitely. What I'm definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. All right, yeah, full cell wasn't available. Well, at least when I was looking, and then somehow I, I don't know, I forgot how I stumbled. Upon, I was like, "Oh, I can go to school for music." Oh man, <laughs> bro! When that came out, I was like, "Man, yeah." And, and, and there's a lot of cats that's that's actually in the in the industry that went through that service, um, music institute. Uh, it's a bunch of them, but they they actually have a pipeline directly to the industry. Now, so back then, if you wanted to intern, you just hey, can I intern for you? <laughs> nah, bro. Hey, can I intern for you? But now they got a pipeline, just like corporate America. They'll send you an intern as soon as they graduate. They'll send an intern to like the studio we work at. They'll send us interns, and the interns will go in there and they actually get to sit in these big sessions, Justin Bieber sessions, and the the uh, Leslie Odom session. They're sitting in the room. I'm like, bro, you you 19 years old, you getting to see how the magic is happening at 19 at 19. I was still trying to read scratch magazine to figure out, do I need an MPC or a MS 8,000? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. You, you actually getting to see this record cre- being created, be created from the beginning to the end, just because you were an intern and went through this pipeline. And so it's, it's, it's night and day from where we came from and, and what the way, the, the way that the kids have the options to do it now. I'll say the other thing is, um, it's not that you can't learn music mm-hmm. and how to do it, but um, it's it's definitely it's definitely possible going to school and picking it up and being very successful. But uh, yeah. I think I think the most important thing is that like when you go to school, um, having a, a a background in music already, and it, yeah. I, that's what it was for me. I already had a background, and so when I went through, it was sort of like a breeze, and like the, the things here and there that I learned, like oh okay, so that's what that is. Oh, I know. Now right, I know right. the correct term to call things because, uh, yeah. you know, like 
like like what what you mentioned earlier and mm -hmm. how you had to like like look around the house and make stuff you know just make, make it happen, happen. Yeah. you know it was like that yeah. for me like you know growing up you just do stuff and you just, i guess you just give give it a name or whatever the mm -hmm. process is and then you go to school and you learn the proper name to call this oh this is uh you know this is that this is yeah that's crazy so uh tell me man um what instruments do you play i play drums keys a little bit well, I play I play keys better than I play guitar. I play bass a little bit. My first instrument is drums, though. So I got drums, keys, uh, electric guitars, bass guitars. So I try to dibble in that. I, I even bought a violin one time, but that's a whole different story. <laughs> it didn't work out like I thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> violin, I'm serious, buddy. Yeah, yeah. So you guys that are watching, um, uh, take a moment and um ask you guys to like hit thumbs up on the video. Um, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. What up, what up Steel? My boy Steel in there from MSX Audio. <laughs> I know you know who that is, right? Not not per se. I I don't know. I probably know him. Bro, and you got you got you playing they sounds all the time on machine, bro. Well, uh, I'm familiar with the company, but not the Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's D Steel. Well, we'll need to uh connect that. We need to connect. I'm looking at all of the all of the questions from YouTube, Facebook. Hey, if y'all got any questions, man, y'all need to <laughs> He said that man can play the pads. Yeah, I can play the pads too, man. My bad. I left pads off. <laughs> you can play the pads. That's what's up. Yeah, play the pads. Yeah. Play the pads. <laughs> Let me check. I'm checking the Facebook comments. What up? What up, Sly? I think this is on my. So let me go. I'm trying to go to yours. Yeah, y'all have any questions? Feel free. Ask the man anything you want. What up, name? What up, name? How is it working with celebrities? <clears throat> well, what up, focus? I just realized what it was. Focus. Man, to be honest with you. I'm I'm kind of different when it comes to celebrities like people. I don't know if it's because I started out early and when I was doing the gospel hip hop thing, we 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 had fans like for real, for real. Like we had we were doing shows and people were showing up with the name drawn on on their skin and pulling up and trying to pull your pants off and all that. So when I came when I come around the celebrities. I, for some reason in my mind, I, I I don't see them like a celebrity. So I don't be like, oh, I'm in here with such and such. Oh, I'm in here with such and such. All the time, my dad asked me, like, did you get a picture? I'm like, no. Why are you taking a picture with him? I'm like, why would I take a picture with him? So we can see. I'm like, oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it's like, if you treat them the way that, like, if you just treat them like regular people, then you'll have a, 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 a good time. If you start going in there and like, yo, I'm a big fan, and yada, 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 they're going to treat you like a fan. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Especially when you're creating. Like, when I'm creating, I'm like, you ain't here for me. I'm in here for you. We have a mutual understanding that we respect each other's talent. Right. Let's get to it. We can skip all the preliminaries. You dope, I'm dope. Exactly. That's it. Let's go. So I, I don't never really just look at it like, oh, man. The only time I, I, I looked at it like that was... Um, when I saw, uh, who, who was that? No, I ain't gonna even put that story right there. Never mind. Yeah, I really don't look at it like that. It's all good. <laughs> I ain't gonna put this story right there. Snipe, you make the best NPC expansion. Dark one, dark parallax one, two, or five. Appreciate it, boy. Wonder. Appreciate it, man. I got another one on, on the way too. This should be dropping this summer. Yeah, this summer. You said June. Yeah, bro, I'm gonna need exclusives so I can. All do right, it. bro. Yeah, so I do. I do review. Of course, you know that. You know I do reviews on kits and. Oh really? And, really? And you, you should start it. You should really start a YouTube channel or something so people can see that. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. I will do where that. Do you, where do you see the music going post COVID nineteen? How will musicians earn? Mm, I think right now. That's a good question. I think right now. 
the world is paying attention to how important the creatives are because right now the creatives are really holding everything together because you go on Instagram, you see all the creatives entertaining everybody. You, you want to see a concert, you want to see a battle, you want to see somebody giving a comedy special. You want to see this, you want to see that. You really don't, you're not going on there to see an accountant count money. You're not going on there to see a doctor do a procedure. They're going on there because they want to see the entertainment side of what, what's going on outside of their four walls. So I think the respect level may go up a little bit. Now, as far as how much the artists will earn or the musicians will earn, I don't know because it's already a, a weird situation with the streaming world and all that stuff going out. But I think the respect level for music is going to, music and entertainment in, in entirety is going to go up. Do you think production is a young person game or would you say it doesn't matter as long as you have the heat? As long as you got that sauce, man, you got to look at it. Look how old Dr. Dre is. Look how old Tim is. Look how old Swiss is. Look how old uh, Pharrell. Um, look how old um, it's a bunch of cats that still out there. Mike Will, not Mike Will, uh, Mike Dean. You know what I'm saying? Mike Dean, is he's been around for generations and he's still doing Travis Scott records. You know what I'm saying? So it's not it's not the age. As long as you got that sauce and you stay current, you can you can continue to to flourish in the music production space. But if you start getting stuck in your ways and like, no, nah, you know, I'm from the boom bap era. We got to keep that boom, doom, ish, boom, doom, ish, right. Boom. They got it. Them young kids got to respect it. You stick on that and you want to make people. They're not going to follow that. That's not what they into. Just like we didn't follow what our fathers and mothers were listening to. It's the same situation now. So as long as you stay current and stay and keep your ear to the curb you'll be able to evolve with everything else. Yeah, I promise you I was telling everybody that. Tim said. I was telling everybody that on, Tim, on the, I was telling everybody that on the, on the stream yesterday. Uh, it doesn't matter how old you are. It just it just don't. As long as you, long got, as that you got that fire. As long as you got the sauce, man. As far as, now, as far as execs and stuff giving you a shot, that may play a part in them, in them giving you the initial look your in your age as far as a producer that may be 37 38 40 years old or whatever saying yo i got that heat and they like oh this dude oh they may not off initial look they may not say oh yeah let me check it out but if you got that heat and they be like who did that and then this 40 year old cat did it then they gonna be like oh well he got that heat i mean it is what it is especially on the creative side now as, as an artist it's kind of different, but yeah. on, on creative side, songwriters and, and producers and arrangers and mixing and all that stuff, we can we can do that forever. You know what I'm saying? Because exactly. as long as you keep that ear and you keep that that sauce, it ain't it ain't no it ain't no taking that away from nobody. Tim said, "What's the secret to the sauce? It's a secret." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, well, that's folks. folks I need exclusive too. All right. <laughs> um yeah exclusives that's what's up so wow. um go ahead he said um shango said why aren't there more black composers in hollywood you mean like film composers i'm thinking that's what he mean what you think? yeah I, i'll take it that uh <laughs> all right so the way that the, the film side of, of music works, it's it looks like that because it's it's like that. But the reason why it's like that is basically back to what I said because you have your Hans Zimmer's and your John Williams and all these cats that came in and capitalized off of the sound, and they they ran with that. So now when you think of these particular composers, you think of the particular sound that they have, and they are they don't it don't age with them. That sound is just that sound. So what happens is the film industry, when they're looking for composers, they want composers. They don't want producers. So once they find out that you're a producer, they kind of like, eh, I don't really want to get into that. Now, they don't want you to be a producer that's a composer. They want you to be a composer only. So if you in there and you dibble and dabble in the production and then you dibble and dabble, it's really, really, it's a small window that they will let you in to get into doing it. And your film, like the films, they will be smaller in budget. When you get ready to do Avengers, you have cats like um, Ludwig that did the Black Panther joint. I think that was Black Panther. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Black Black Panther. Ludwig did that, did that. But his production and his composition style are similar. 
but you got a producer. Say if I wanted to get into film score, my production style and my scoring style would have to be two separate worlds. And if they want me to do a film and it's going to take me a year to do this film, they got a guarantee that I'm going to be able to be committed to this film for this full year. I can't do that if I'm doing sound design, production, I'm working Chris joint, I'm working such such joint work. Ninja. I can't give a whole year into just doing a first scene for the first six months. You see what I'm saying? So they want you to be a composer and they give you to, they'll pay you up front to do what you got to do, but they want you all in on that composition side. So that's why a lot of the composers are, are, you don't see a lot of black cats in there because of the way it was set up from the beginning. Like a lot of the composers were, um, non-black people but then when they started trying to get into it you got to be all in and so a lot of cats that uh, they don't want to do that because most of them are producers i got a question that came in from focus he says how do you make it being from a city that no one knows about the backwoods <clears throat> i left That's i left i went um this was before the well the internet was popping before I left, but it wasn't as social as it is now. When I was in, in Birmingham, I would drive, and I used to travel a lot. I was going to Atlanta every Tuesday. I was working over at Jazz Face Studio of Chamblee Tucker. I was going over there, working out of there on every Tuesday. And then once every quarter, I was flying to LA. You know what I'm saying? So I was doing all this moving, and I would go to New York and go to Florida for a beat battle. I would go to uh, Tennessee for a session or something. And then when I every time I would go to California and I would head back, the A and R that I'm trying to impress would hit me up and be like, yo, we're trying to get you in with such and such. Can you come in tomorrow? I'm like, bro, I just left yesterday. Oh man, see if you were out here, we could have got I'm like, okay. And see, they didn't know they were messing with a real one. So when they mess with a real one, you keep telling me, oh man, if you was out here, okay. So I left, came out here. So when I came out here, of course that stuff didn't continue. They were just blowing whoop tickets, but it was the fact that I left Birmingham and came to California and put me in a space to where opportunities were always around and you'd be able to be out there and you were shaking and move. If you can, if you're a shaking mover, you can get out here and you can maneuver and, and find opportunities that weren't available to you in Birmingham. But it's different now because social media space has exploded back then, 2010, 2011, the social media thing was still just on a up. It was it was still rising. It's not like it's not like it is now. It wasn't like it is now. So it was kind of difficult to be in a space there down there when nobody's looking. Tell me, hey, I got that heat. Nobody cares. Nobody knew. That's what's up. All right, we want to take a moment, pound that like button on this video, subscribe if you haven't already. Those of you on my Facebook, uh, I I hate to like try to like transition y'all to youtube because i know y'all not gonna do it but if you're interested i am on youtube as you guys see in the thumbnail um yeah thumbs up on the video thumbs up on facebook thumbs up everywhere y'all getting man this man is dropping like some serious gems right now so i need to see them thumbs up and yeah so the next question is uh this is coming from boy wonder what kind of proof producer do you have to be to make music for television? Um, well, music tele music production is kind of, it's different than, well, it depends. It depends on what, what type of music production you're talking about. Like some, some shows take actual songs and put them in shows. And some production, um, some shows or movies and stuff actually want songs catered to that particular show. So if you have to cater the stuff to the show, you have to have a commercial ear, meaning you have to know what sounds pop when it when it comes across a TV station. You can't I mean, TV, um, TV screen or, or Internet or Netflix, or whatever you whatever the platform is. You can't be using like a simple thing. Like if I'm making a track for uh, CSI, whatever, I can't make a track with a whole bunch of 808s or a whole bunch of low end because the television sets don't register that unless they have it a system set up. I mean, a system at their house to bring that 808 to life. So if my whole track is based off, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They're not going to hit it. 
So I would have to try to either put some distortion on there to make that production, make that 808 stick through a laptop speaker or a phone or earbud or something like that, or some type of saturation to make that that part stick out versus on a record, you can just have an 808 in a cloud. Right. You see what I'm saying? So it's got to, you got to just be able to translate from a record of creating a record and creating something for TV. And then on TV, a lot of depending on the shows, a lot of the, a lot of the music has a different sound because you have to keep that attention and that energy on that particular show. So if they're asking for a song that feels happy or a song, a transitional song from a murder scene to the funeral, you can't go in there and play them no Lizzo type of beat. Right, 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 right. Exactly. <laughs> you got to give them what's going what's gonna to make that transition smooth. And a lot of these TV shows, like with Empire and stuff like that, they, they actually give you the, the description of what they want for that particular scene. And we have to go write the songs and write and do the music and all that stuff to fit that particular scene. So it's, it's catered directly towards that. So it, it's, it's not... A, it's, Per se is not really a different type of producer. It's it's just being able to convert. It's able to be a chameleon when it comes to the different spaces. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Film, it's film and TV and all that stuff is the same. Just being able to have the to one be able to understand what they're asking you for because they'll say something like, "We need something up tempo, feels like Lizzo, but feels like Twenty One Savage, and feels like Sean Paul. Give me the light." But it's for a, a pregnancy scene where she's having a miscarriage. You'd be like, what? <laughs> right, 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 right. So you got to be able to interpret those things and pick the meat off the bone and figure out, OK, they talking about this type of vibe. They may want the poppy chords or the 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 guitar organic sound of a Lizzo. They may want the dark sound of a 21 Savage, but then they want a, 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 a energetic hook for Sean Paul. You know what I'm saying? So you got to put all, be able to put all that together on the fly and create it as you go. Right. Paying attention to details and not creating yeah. whatever you want. Yeah, man. So, so what? Okay, here, here's one I get a lot, and um, I, I I mention this quite often in, in my videos, but um, coming from you, it might it might it might sound different. So, uh, I think there is a big misconception on gear versus the person who's creating the music so a lot of people they, they stay on top of grabbing the latest gears or whatnot and but it's not really about the gear it's about the person behind the gear so like could you expound on that what are your thoughts on that um it's funny you might ask that question my brother <laughs> I already told you what I was going to say. <laughs> it ain't the gear. It's the ear. You asked me what I did. You, did you ask me what I use? Well, well, a lot of a lot of people. No, yeah, I, we I, we I didn't ask that this, yet, bro. But you we, could we go into that. This, bro. We practiced this, <laughs> right. bro. You're supposed to say, what do you use? And I, I'm like, oh, it's well, funny you asked me that question because let me see. Oh, OK. OK. Uh, I use this. That's. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, let's rewind. So okay, so the the question was uh, a lot. A lot of people think it's the gear that that makes them dope. So if they don't have this, they they need that in order to make dope music. Mm -hmm. And I guess we can go into the to the part we rehearse and right. what and what you use. What I use? You ask what I use? Oh my <laughs> god, I was not prepared. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, it don't matter for real. Like. I use I use the the thirty two MK what is the M thirty two controller I got the sixty the forty one iron right here I got the sixty one downstairs um, that's on the keys you know what I'm saying you can it's not it's not like for real people always take that take that and say yeah it's just saying it it's really not the gear it's really the ear because I use that and I may use this <clears throat> you don't know nothing about that yes sir OG Oh wow! You know what I'm oh wow! The OG, bro. <laughs> you may be able to use, and even if you don't want to use this, there's another option. You want to use that? It's the option for rolling. 
roll the seaboard. And it's a totally different platform, totally different key bed and everything. That. Then you also got, since we talk about pads, of course, machine. But you be like, I don't like machine. I don't want to rap with machine. You can get the same drip you get out of the machine in here. Ugh. Live. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up. Or, or if you don't want to be limited to the 16 pads, you can go with the push. So it ain't the it ain't the gear. It's the, it's the it's the person that's using the gear that makes the that makes whatever that gear is capable of doing shine. You know what I'm saying? It's not you know you can't be limited to and that's that's just that, that's just what I have. There's other options I do too. They, some people even I think you use the um the personas joint. The yeah. the I forget what it's called. Was it the uh, Adam Adam pad? Yeah, the Adam pad. I wasn't a fan of that, but you got it. So that that don't mean you don't have a drip. You know what I'm saying? You might have a drip over there with the Adam. I don't. I didn't dig the Adam. Yeah, I I, I still don't dig it, but I I, I use it. It's there. To to your point, yeah, it's just tools, man. Yeah, it's just tools. What was Jay just Jay Johnson's question? Why does Snipe Young have a, such a small footprint on YouTube? Not really into social media. There isn't much quality info and tips on black music out there from professionals. I actually do have a YouTube. It's just not called Snipe Young. It's called the Produce Market. Um, I'm on all social medias, um, Instagram at Snipe Young, Instagram, I mean, Facebook, Facebook, Snipe Young, Twitter, Snipe Young. Uh, I'm on all of them. Shoot me a follow. Shoot me a follow, bro. I follow you back. That's Jay Johnson. Jay Johnson. Okay. Uh, oh, and then SnipeYoung.com too. If you want to check out the stuff. Uh, this gotta be the craziest brief I've ever heard. Snipe, but that's how, that's how it is. That's how they have them written down. They have them written down just like that. And and they expect you to interpret it. What are some of the favorite? I think I'm taking your job, man. No, you good? Cause you got <laughs> you got um you got followers on your page, and you got questions that I'm not yeah. seeing. So I mean, if you see a question, yeah, go ahead. I'm I'm cool with it. Um, what are some of your what of what some of your favorite plugins? If you don't mind saying, um. Plugins or VSTs? Answer that. Answer that, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to that question. Plugins or VSTs? Plugins meaning like EQs, compression, and all that, or VSTs meaning native instruments and all that output and stuff. Yeah. So, hey, so uh, was that a question? Huh? Was that a question just now? Yeah. He. I'm waiting on him to tell me. Was he talking about plugins or? Right. 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 So. So while he's verifying wh- which one. He's yeah. talking about uh can you is there a favorite doll that you use? Um my favorites are Studio One and Ableton, Ableton 10. I am like Studio One is my that's like the OG to me. I used to use Pro Tools back in the day. I got Pro Tools, but on the pro- production side, they lacked a lot when it came to production for me. So I jumped over. I bounced around. I went to FL. I went to Reaper. I went to Reason. I tried all these different these different things, and I tried Studio One on version one, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. All right, it's all right, whatever. Then two came out, and I was sold from then because of the drag and drop mm-hmm. and the, the time stretching features they have on there, and the way you can manipulate the sound. Like I could take a a loop and. Uh, stretch it out and make it half time and then cut it in half and all this type of crazy stuff to it on the like just like that boop 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 boop. I couldn't do that in a bunch of in the other dolls that I was using. And then I was using I used Studio One two three four all the way up to four point five. I still been using it now. But then I was introduced to Ableton. Now Ableton was kind of like a Studio One mixture with my brain, if that makes sense. Right. The reason why I say that, if I want to do automation in Studio One, I would have to do a couple steps to do a, a pitch bend or a glide or do this. This is what I want to do right here. Boom, boom, boom. I got to do two, maybe two steps to add the track and add the automation and then do all this stuff. On, on Ableton, I could just tap it and I do what I need to do. And I could put 64 sounds on this pad and keep it going and boom, 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 and knock it out. And then 
there's a lot of little tricks and stuff that for a producer, it made me feel like I had to, it, it made it feel like I was at a, can, a candy store as a kid. Like, oh man, all these different things I could do. It just made the, it made the creation process seem so open. And that's how I felt when I first started using Studio One. And then now they're more centered towards a lot of the live stuff. Right. So it's like a lot of the creative space that was there has been confined. So when I was getting limited to certain stuff, I'm like, oh, man, but y'all took that out. Oh, man, but y'all didn't do this. And I would holler, like, can you put this in there? Can you put that in there? And they wouldn't. It was just like, so, OK, cool. So able to start doing it. So I still bounce around between both of those. I may start a track in Studio One if I got to cut vocals and everything. I still cut all my vocals in Studio One. I still do all it. All of that still goes on in Studio One. But Ableton has been my like for production, I've, I've been rocking with Ableton for a good little, probably like a year and a half, two years now. I promise you, I'm gonna I'm gonna highlight this section of the video and send that to personas. So I've been preaching <laughs> that. I've been preaching that for a minute. I even made dedicated videos saying like, "Hey man, um, I think I'm gonna switch the game up here." Cause yeah, uh, I, I mean the, the the people that like all them cats over there, they're my people over there. But it was like when I was creating, like it was time to create. It was it was so much stuff that was already effective. They may have switched it. And when they switched it, they weren't thinking. I'm not going to say they weren't thinking, but it didn't benefit the music producer, like the electronic music producer, the the, the hip hop R&B guy that's sitting at the house. and It was more centered towards somebody that's recording live instrumentation more. So when it started transitioning there i was like okay it's still a dope product but for what i do i need to have ableton that's a i can do either one of these effectively on the fly boom 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 i can go with it and so that's why i started going over there now i would i would oh, say yeah. i would say midi cap yeah the midi capture boy wanted that is dope too you know what midi capture is don't it you know what that is either? yeah 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 so that so they they have that on on um ableton as well a I could just be playing the sound. You know, you had that groove. You're like, oh, man, I'm going to record that. But then when you try to re-record it, it don't sound like what you were doing when you were just feeling it. That audio, that MIDI capture, if I hit that button, it's going to capture what I did. And I'm good to go. I saw that in Logic a long time ago. My boy nephew was doing it all yeah, the time. And I used yeah. to be hating. Right. He'd be over there creating something. I'm like, record it. Are you going to record? He was like, I ain't no worried about it. I ain't worried about it. <laughs> and he'll hit the button, boom, and it'll pop up. I'm like, man, I'm hating. I couldn't do that in Studio One. I think but Studio I One. I think Studio One only has audio capture, right? No, now. you know what? They if you had a track armed, I think it's just, yeah, I think it's just audio capture. Yeah, yeah. Audio. And, but you gotta like preset it because it only records so many seconds or something like that. So you gotta go in your settings. But uh, yeah, I, I will say this: like, um, I'm trying to be careful what I what I ask you, and uh, but because uh, you know, let me. Let me ask the boy one um, about the VST thing. He came back and said VST and plug-in. All right. Uh, it's it's so much stuff out there, man. But as far as like keys and like when I'm using keys, I'm always going to Spectral Sonics for my pianos and my Rhodes and all that. So it's Keyscape, Omnisphere, Trillion for my basses. Um, I'm using Output a lot. Uh, Arcade, Substance. Um, it's another one. Uh I want to say it's analog strings and woodwinds or something like that. I use that a lot. Uh, I use native instruments a lot. I use um, the the a lot of the play series stuff. That play series analog dreams and um, what's the other one? Ah, analog dreams and I want to say it's ethereal. Yeah, ethereal. Some yeah. Yeah, that sounds right. it's a couple of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, man, it's so much stuff. Um, I actually use Arteria. I love pigments too. Um, man, is is uh, um, as far as that's for VSTs. As far as um, plugins, uh, I, I use a lot of McDSP stuff. Um, plugin plugin alliance. I use uh, it's this one group. Uh, I think it's called Unfiltered. Let me see. Unfiltered, I think, is the name of them. But they have a lot of glitch effects. That's really, really dope. Uh, 
uh, Imperial Labs, Less Compression. It's a bunch. I use a bunch of different stuff, man. I, I, in doing music production like full time and sound design and mixing and all that stuff, I have to keep my ear to what's new. You know what I'm saying? What's the next wave or what's going on? So I try to, if it's something that's interesting, I go by it and just have it on my computer. Like I got stuff that I haven't even touched yet, but I saw it on an ad or something. Like, hmm, that's cool. Yeah, I'm going to get that. And then one day I end up using it. I'm like, oh man, this is so dope. I'm trying to find the name of that. I think it was Unfiltered. Yeah, the Unfiltered plugin. They got Triad and all that stuff. Let me show you a picture of them. Hold on, let me show you this picture. Hey, make sure y'all pounding that like button. Can you see the picture? Mm, no. You only see Studio One? Are you sharing your screen? Yeah. Y'all see it? Hold on a second. I got to. I gotta throw that one in there. Let's see if it works. Do, 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 Let me see what else. They have any more questions while we getting it up there? Media capture is good. I see. Yeah. Yeah, the push is pricey. It's pricey. Okay. Oh, you got it up? Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's unfiltered audio. Like these joints, it's so it's so dope because you can. I could take a loop, and you probably won't be able to hear it because of the, I don't have it running through the thing, but I could take a loop and load it on there, and I can manipulate this joint. Let me find one. Hopefully, it works. Uh, one second. Time. All right, so save. I'm using it right. Okay, I need to turn it up. Hmm. Can y'all hear it? Can you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. So it was like stuff like that. And the way I was just able to loop that and just come back around with it. That's the reason why I, I used to use Studio One. I used Studio One like I used to. I mean, it's the reason why I went to Studio One when I did, because I could just take that loop and put it on the beat. If I want to, if I want to trap it out, it's already trapped out. <laughs> oh, that's dope. Oh, That's cool to see you still like using battery. Oh, I got bat. I use battery because I make all my kits in battery. You see, I, all these are my. This is my stuff. This is my arson. Nobody else has these, brother. Nobody. Wow. You see that, brother? Wow. Oh. That's what's up. Sauce, brother. Sauce. Sauce. Yo. 
yeah so that's that's um unfiltered i use that joint a lot like unfiltered and half time and all that type of stuff but you can go in and, and manipulate it how you want it and that's why i like unfiltered they, they got a bunch of them uh special ops is dope sandman is dope you ever used these before nope nope this is oh, my this is my they super dope, bro. My gnome, dope. Watch this one. I was just about to say, well, now we get into sound design stuff. Yeah, that's sound design. See, I'm, I'm about to shut this stream, this stream down. Make y'all pay for this. This is, this is the sauce right here. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. So yeah, that's that, that. I use that a lot, man. I use um, I use a lot of different things. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Yeah, I, I use Omnisphere too. Yeah. Omnisphere. GI Mag said, "When you gonna get me in the spaceship, man? You got to come out here once this quarantine over. We got to make some shake." So so um earlier what what I was what I was going ahead into was um uh, I'm gonna just let you know the speculations that I had just by observing um like I say um uh, you can decline the question cuz the uh, you know this this NDAs and stuff going on don't want to definitely don't want to like spill nothing but uh um so recently I've noticed a lot of videos that Studio One personas and um they're doing a lot of stuff with um with Ableton Live. Mm -hmm. And it, it led me to believe that perhaps there's some type of uh integration or maybe I don't want to say merge, but like I just was wondering like why is it that we learning so much about Ableton and what you could do with the Atom Pad and so I'm just thinking like like okay, they showing videos about like how you can use the Atom Pad with Ableton, but why not just get the push that's designed for Ableton? But I think I get it. Like I guess if you was to have Ableton at the the lower tier, um, you can just grab the uh, the Atom Pad, which is like a buck fifty right now, and you can do your thing. But I mean, me, me personally, I wouldn't want to. Work in Ableton Live using the Atom. I I will want to use a push. <laughs> like just just save your money and grab the yeah, push. Yeah. Like that just don't make yeah. sense to you. Yeah, man. So you know, I was just thinking like, man, what what do they got up their sleeves? Why are they doing all of this? You know, I don't know. I don't know if you want to comment on that, but um, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, bro. Okay, all right, we're gonna leave that alone. <laughs> No, because you got to remember, Ableton is is a they they're both down, Ableton and, and Persona, so I don't know what they got up their sleeve. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so so reason, so okay, you know about reason. They they opened the <laughs> they they opened the pathway. <laughs> You're not getting no answers out of me. I know, I know, <laughs> I know. That's why I, that's why that's why I said that. Um, One two three four fifth. Right, 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 right. One two three four fifth. So why not talk about reason? Like, you can use it as a plugin inside the studio. You know what I'm saying? Like stuff like that. Like, come on, man. Like, I don't know. That's, that's just me. I was, I was just thinking, like, hmm. I wonder. But what you, what, what you wonder? You thinking? You wondering if, if Ableton and Persona is gonna come together or something? Uh, not necessarily, but uh, I don't know. May, maybe. I, f I feel like I feel like um, Reason Studio propeller mm -hmm. heads. They are onto something in how they were able to make their doll a plug in. Mm -hmm. So maybe there might be something like that 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 you may able to maybe able to run Ableton inside of Studio One or vice versa, you, you, or maybe you use their already, racks. You can do that. You can do that already though. Through you um know. through re uh, rewire, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just like the machine, just like MPC, running as a VST. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, you can do that. All right, that's what's up. So I got a I got another question. Um so my boy Steve, Steve Petty from Chicago, he says, uh What up, Chris? 
with the way that the music industry is going, how secure is having a job in music? Um, and what kind of job in music? That's that's the question. Like, what type of job are you talking about? Uh, in the creative side, the label side, the artist side, it's a bunch of different avenues or di- different um, roles in music. Yeah, Steve, if you want to clarify that in the comments, man. Um, because music music isn't going anywhere. Music got, like, if you think about it, back in the 30s when they had the Great Depression, I think that was the 30s. G.I., you my fact checker. You, 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 the, you the, um, G.I. is a real smart dude. He's the dude that's really smart that raps for, for fun, but he's really like a genius dude. So I think it was the 30s when they had the Great Depression, but back then they used music to get them through that. Civil rights music, civil rights movement. Um, used um, music to help them cope. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. what up, Ben? What up, Ben and Naomi? B Park, what's they, up? They they use music to help them cope. So even when it's times when the times are bad, people go and revert to music entertainment, like like we're doing now. It's just on Instagram. It's just on Netflix. It's just on YouTube. Back in the day, there would be gatherings or listening to the radio and trying to get this music and that's why a lot of the great songs from from the uh civil rights movement in the 60s and 70s and all that stuff um came from a place of hurt and pain like what's going on and all this stuff those songs came from that time so it's not like the music is going to stop that's why i asked what particular avenue of music is he talking about he's talking about the label side so he says uh he says uh mixing production writing no, nah, that's going to be there for a while. It's going to be there because that's the behind. Actually, we're going to get more. We're going to get more exposure now because of the way things are going as far as people respecting the creators a little more. Mm-hmm. We're going to get more exposure now than we used to because, as you can tell, yeah, it was eight started in late 20s. OK, yeah. If, when you think about the battles that's going on now. <clears throat> You've had Timberland, Swiss Beats, Hit Boy, Boy Wanda, Jante, Austin, Neo, T Pain, Lil John, all these different cats. And they're doing they're playing songs that they wrote or produced. You see what I'm saying? Everybody right. keep asking, yo, can you put Monica against Brandy? Can you put T.I. against Jesus? Can you put and that hasn't been the narrative the whole time. Nobody they haven't been putting artists against artists. They've been using doing the creators and the creators. And so because of it, I think a lot of the producers and the songwriters and stuff are going to get a lot of more, a lot more respect because they're going to start. People are going to start recognizing, hey, you're the face of this song, but who actually wrote it? Who actually produced it? You know what I'm saying? So the mix engineers, of course, you got to have people to mix those songs. It's just going to be now it's going to be survival of the fittest because it's so many producers, it's so many mix engineers, there's so many mastering engineers, but it's still just a few good ones. It's still just a few dope producers. It's it's could be a million and one basketball players, but it's only one LeBron, it's only one Kobe, it's only one Jordan, it's only one Steph Curry. You know what I'm saying? It's a bunch. Of, you go to the gym, well, you can't go now, but when before the quarantine was over, you go to the gym, you see everybody out there with their sleeve on and they got the J's on, they got the, the compression shorts on, they got the uh all the gear on, but they not LeBron. You know what I'm saying? They can act like they're a professional basketball player, but you're not. And it shows in your skill set. You can be super dope and just not be that one. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's what's up. Reading the comments. Jersey Boy from YouTube says uh, a lot of dogs are trying to emulate Able to Live. For example, Digital Performer. Yeah, I know about that. Uh, is using a clip that's launch. What, that's what- that's what they had us working on in college, digital performer. That's what I couldn't remember. It was okay. digital performer. Uh, I didn't. I didn't get hip to Ableton until two years ago, thanks to Jay Josh. Shout out to Jay Josh. That's what's up. Uh, this one is coming from Kitchen Hacks. Do you think it's possible to make an album in Logic that <laughs> competes with today's market only? <laughs> Only using Logic stock for hip hop. Does Reason seem to put out a better overall quality for hip hop? Well, 
They recorded um, what's the girl name? Billie Eilish. Her mm -hmm. joint was done in, in Logic. Yeah. So that that answered that question right there. She has hip hop undertones throughout her whole record. They did the whole joint in Logic. Now I'm not sure if it was all stock sounds, but again, it goes back to the gear, not the ear. I got a bunch of plugins. I got a bunch of um, VSTs. But if I was limited to a certain amount, like I was on the Casio that only had six tracks that can record uh, how many of bars without looping, you right. can make it happen. If you know how to, if you know how to make it happen, you can make it happen with that, with whatever you got. You know what I'm saying? Like if I, if, if my computer is in in a different room and I don't have any of my hard drives plugged in and I can only create with my tie and impact, I can make it happen. If I can only create a song with loops. Chopping loops up and boom, boom, boom. Go get some stuff from Splice. Go get some stuff from Spli Sounds and chop these joints up. I make a whole beat with just cut the kick drum and cut the snare drum and put the kick on the one and cut the snare on the two and the next one on the four. I can do that. So it's not just based on I have to have Omnisphere 2. I have to have this. I have to have that. Because guess what? When you have that, it ain't going to make the beat by itself. You still got to have the sauce to put with the keys. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yep, exactly. Shout out to Marcus, Marcus Huskins, good dude right there. He says the cream, the cream will oh. always rise to the top. I sure Facts. hope I'm a part of the cream. Facts. Absolutely. B Park said Ben and Naomi checking in again. Thanks, thank you, Snipe Yarn, for the Golden Kingdom. It's still one of my favorite tunes in Machine. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate that. That's what's up. All right, that man. Was my, that was my first. That was my actual first um, exp expansion. <clears throat> Golden that was Kingdom. My first one. Yeah, because I used to do. Um, I started out doing sound design for uh, nephew. There and nephew thinks that I was doing them. That's how I got all those battery kits. I was doing them. And he would. He was like, "Yo, run me a kit, man." I'm like, man. But see, back then I was doing 70, 70 to one hundred and twenty-eight sounds per kit, and I was dropping off ten. Boom. Drop off ten. Boom. Boom, boom. And so I got up to about 200, 300 or some kits. And so he introduced me to my guy, um, Justin Myrax over at Native. And um, that's how we ended up coming up with Golden Kingdom. Justin Myrax gave me a shot at Native just based off of the fact that I had did the kits for um, Nephew and gave me a shot at Native. And I've been rocking with them ever since. And then, ironically, Justin introduced me to Akai, which was weird. Boy, that, that was weird. <laughs> that that trip, yeah, cause we was at the thing. He was like, "You ever did something with, with a cat?" I'm like, "Bro, is this a trick question? You, know, <laughs> you trying to see if I'm rocking with y'all? No, it's cool. It's cool. I'm taking you over there to meet Andy." I'm like, "No, I'm good." He was like, "No, bro, come on." And he took me over there, and Andy was like, "What's up, man?" He was like, "Yo, this is one of our sound designers. He's real dope." And I'm still looking like, "This is a trick." All right. Like, he wearing a wire. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is uh, is is Justin still over there, at, uh, Native? Yeah, yeah, he, he's on the side, on the sound side. Okay. Sounds.com side, yeah. I got to say what's up to him, man. Cool dude. He said, uh, Golden Kingdom is still dope, but pure drip. <laughs> Appreciate it. Hey, man, what, temp, yeah, what's y'all favorite, uh, what's y'all favorite expansions that I've done? I've done Golden Kingdom, drip, pure drip, uh, what is it? Um, uh, 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 uh uh, uh, Lila Glass Street Swarm, Infamous Flow, Dark Parallax One, Dark Parallax Two. Everybody always saying that they like Golden Kingdom. Yeah, I, I I'll take a plunge at that question. I, yeah, definitely. I I liked it, that one. And this question this question wasn't for you, bro. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. I like Pure Drip too. Pure Drip is dope. <laughs> hey, so so those collections on uh, sounds.com is that is that like um you just putting a, a bunch of things you like together cuz I I think I'm yeah. noticing that people are like the artists that's, that's on there they pull different things from different other packs on there. Well, no, nah, the ones that I, I did some actual packs on my own too. I did like uh I think I got maybe, maybe 10, I guess specific island atmosphere gorilla drums, eight spike crown. All of this is on my site too. If you click on that joint, it's a bunch of them on there. But I did an actual pack um, where they wanted me to do a collection where I went through and picked sounds from a, another 
like from other packs or whatever. I think there was a trap joint they were doing. So that's the packs you're talking about. It was an actual collection that they had me to do, which was a um, I went and just picked stuff off of the site mm-hmm. and made it into a pack for that. But I have like um, loop libraries on there as well that are not associated with the collection. Okay. I think it's like 12 of them, two, four, five, eight. Have you, have, you, have you ever thought about like designing your own like GUI <clears throat> or instrument plug-in or whatever? I'm actually when well, my own meaning like Snipe Young's brand. Or, yeah, yeah. I I've thought about it, but it's it's tedious, bro. It's yeah. that that side of the game. Like right now, I'm doing some for um for Native that's on the Play Series side. And it's really, really, really tedious, like doing that sound design for actual instrumentation. It's a little different than just building the kits. The kits are tedious as well because we have to do all the macros. We have to create the sounds that go inside of the joints and the loops and the demos. And then you have to make the patterns and mix the patterns and you got to name them. So it's all tedious. But then on this side of the spectrum, you have to actually create the sounds make the sounds into presets. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I don't know. I thought I could just put them drums in there, y'all. <laughs> we could just play. So it's a little tedious um, on that side of it, man. But I don't even know if I would want to do that because that competition is so stiff. It's right. this it's this plug in um for your PC users. I don't know. I bought it. I don't I haven't been able to use it because it's only PC. But it's called uh, the Genesis you, you saw that? The Genesis VST? Yeah, I did. It's super cold, bro, but it was only for it's only for PC because he said he he couldn't make it into 64 bit. So it left me out in the cold. But I bought it just in case he transferred and I gave it to my homeboy. If he was able to um if he if he ever does a cross platform or whatever they call it, cross whatever. You know, when you can use it on Mac and PC. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but, but that's joint, that joint is dope too. But the fact that he put all of that work into it and he only charged the book for it is one dollar. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like that, that type of thing. I'm like, man, he said it took him 10, 11 years to do that. Wow. Wow. Are the packs on your on your MPC and battery for? Are the packs on your site MPC and battery for ready? Oh, the packs on that's um, on that's the things that are on that site. They direct they're um, coming from sounds.com. So you could put the the wave files in any of those in MPC or better. Golden Kingdom infamous flow because the warm boom bat and grit. <laughs> Raina so oh she dope too, bro. Raina so dope. Okay. Raina, Raina, I think it's Raina. You know how social media you think you know people real name, but you really don't. You know their real name. <laughs> I've been saying Reno in my head all the time. All right. Parallax 1 and Parallax 2, but I have NX, NI expansions too. You did a 10 minute beat in your YouTube. You usually go to Kingdom in it. Appreciate that focus. Yeah, so we got a mixture of uh, Golden Kingdom and Infamous. Those are the ones I see most mostly. Yeah, Infamous Flow. And par- well, he said dark parallax. Okay. <clears throat> so uh hey, thumbs up. Thumbs up on the video, guys. Thumbs up on it. Keep keep them coming. Um, so uh I don't know how much time we got, but uh there is an interesting question that is it's one of those battle questions, and I don't know why he asked this, but um I try I try to stay away from this question because there's so many um sensitive people but uh the question was pc or mac <laughs> <laughs> i came from pc i've i've used i used pc all the way up until 2018 believe it or not i um only reason why i switched well the reason why i switched i had a 2011 macbook pro and i was trying to get into trying to figure out if i like mac or pc so i was i was taking it to the studio and the 2011 that I was using, I had Omnisphere and everything on that joint. I mean, I'm making the track. <clears throat> so Nephew comes in there, like a virtuoso on the keys. He's coming in there, he's like, yo, yo, 
oh, let me add some on that. Pull up a pull up Omnisphere. I'm like, I bet. But I'm already knowing in my head, this is a 2011 MacBook Pro. I don't have a eight gigabytes RAM on this situation. You know what I'm So when you play this, I gotta go and bounce it out and then print. You know, I gotta print it and <laughs> to be able to play it back. He played. He like, oh yeah, give me another one. I'm like. <laughs> So I load another one. He playing that drum like. <laughs> <laughs> so I was embarrassed. So I was like, uh. And so he was like, give me a, uh, you got, you got, uh, I think he asked for a trillion or something. And he loaded it and it was farting again. So I'm like, oh, man. So I went and bought the 2018, the the one that had just dropped, the 2018 joint, like five band. I'm like, I got to get it. I can't be embarrassed no more. Boom. Went and bought it. And so I went cold turkey on PC. Like I was I was a PC head. I had PC at home. The only reason why I used Mac was because I was going to the studio and we was air dropping files back and forth. That was the only reason. When I got back home, I would take that hard drive that I was using on my PC because I had it where it was on um not Fat32, um, whatever the one you can use on PC and Mac, um, NT, whatever. X Fat. Yeah, X I, would, I would take I would take the hard drive out of take the external hard drive and I would put it into my uh, PC when I got home. So I'm using PC at home. So when I'm at the studio, I'm just using Mac just, just to be able to add drop. When I bought that 2018, I was like, oh, I paid for this joint now. I'm finna have to use this all day. Right, <laughs> so right. I took the old PC, sat it to the side. P- my old PC was a juggernaut that had 32 gigabytes of RAM. I had it was I I seven, I eight back then. Mm-hmm. And it was it was a workhorse. I was like, I'm sitting to the side, put the new Mac up there, and I started using it, and everything was so simple. That's the part that people, that's the part that gets everybody. The simplicity of the Mac. I plug in a, a power cord. I mean, I plug in a, a USB keyboard. It's boom, ready to run. I'm like, oh, I ain't got to load the driver? No. Okay. Let me plug in this audio interface. Doom. It already know what it is. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of see what y'all was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> then I go and start using little, um, Going into video editing and stuff, and I'm like, it's not glitching like it was on the PC. It's not crashing like it was on the PC. Why I can't use this like I do? I'm like, oh, okay. So it's little, it's little small stuff. A lot of the stuff is class compliant for Mac before it is for PC. A lot of the stuff that I needed for the PC, I mean for music production, wasn't available on PC. Like I couldn't use the for the longest. I couldn't even buy Apollo Twin when they did drop the Apollo Twin. It was a USB version, and it was only made for PC. So I'm like, okay, that's whack. So I went and bought that joint. Then right after that, I went to Mac. So guess what I had to do? Go buy a Mac version of the same interface. So <laughs> yeah, I got, I got the PC and the Mac version of Apollo. But the only thing about the Apollo is all the dongles you got to get to go with it. Like I got to get, I had to get a dongle to go from the Apollo Firewire, I mean Thunderbolt to the the new USB C joint, then you gotta get another dongle to come out to build a, put expansions on that because it only comes with four USB C ports. But as far as the 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 comparison, I I wouldn't go back to PC. That's just me personally. Because it's so this is stable, bro. Is I, I always used to hear people saying that and I was one of them cats like, man, whatever cuz oh God, you ain't done my name but oh, everything. <laughs> I, I promise you, I used to be like that. And yeah. I got it. And I start, and I'm, I'm talking about the stability, like doing what we're doing right now. I wouldn't have been able to do this live thing and 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 just have no hiccups. We had no hiccups. You know what I'm saying? We had a couple, like what you was trying to do on your end, but I switched from phone to piece, from phone to computer, phone to computer, phone to computer. Let me plug this up, plug this up. Let me do this, let me do that. I did all that without having to restart the computer and, oh, it crashed on me, blue screen. That's that's the wonderful world of Mac. You plug and play with it. Yeah. I, 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 I can that, attest I hope that to that. Answers your question. No, I hope that answers this question. I yeah, I think that was a that was a good answer. I, I still have uh uh my iMac before this one. It's ten years old. It yeah. still still runs smooth like a charm. I just need to change the hard drive and we good. Um yeah. I bought my wife a, a a MacBook, it was white. That thing is like fifteen, sixteen years ago and <laughs> Still turns on and it's, it boots up like it's supposed to. No issues. It just can't update to the latest OS. But yeah, Mac products. I mean, you spend the money, mm-hmm. but you, you, you spend the money, right? That, but it's an investment because yeah. it lasts a very long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's what's up. That's what's that's up. So, 
great PCs out there in the moment. But, but yeah, that is true. That now does Troy D make a great point that like as far as the comparison of prices and the the power, he's he's ac- absolutely correct. For five bands, you can get you you probably can get you two PCs built with what you want in it. Mm-hmm. But let, and you still can have some change. You can still can do a Chick Fil A situation when you leave out of the <laughs> yeah absolutely. The store. But the the stability, even when you get it to the, it's the, I think it's more so of the operating system because the technically the Mac and the PC both have Intel processing now, so right. it's not that it's not that part of it. So I think it's more so of the OS that they're running on each on these different systems. That makes the Mac more stable, and then they test it. This is the part that, that people always forget. They they don't catch this point. They test their their class compliant with these these tools that they drop. Most of these companies they're putting these machines and stuff out. They testing this stuff on the Mac. Mm. So when they put it they put it out, they like okay, it works great. But they tested it for the Mac, and they may do tests with PC, but they're not really focused on PC because in their mind, they think an industry standard producer is using a Mac. So we got to make sure that this stuff works with Mac. So when PC stuff, that's why a lot of the fixes always take forever for PC, um, for people to fix the PC stuff, because PC is not the first thought when it comes to production. They're thinking, ah, okay. Wow. That's good to know. Yeah. 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 I wouldn't know because I don't use PCs. But I came I, from the, I came from that. That's why I laughed when he said it. <laughs> I mean, I, I I came I came from the PC world too, but it's been a long time since I worked. Cause once I got a Mac, you know, it's that saying: once you get a Mac, you can't go back. Yeah, and it's just been like that for me forever. I deal with PCs at work. You mm-hmm. know, everybody has a PC, but you know, Macs are just. I guess it just depends on what you're doing. Yeah. Eugene said, what's up, Snipe? What would you recommend for a beginner starter production kit setup? Um, of course, a laptop. I'm not going to even say Mac or PC because if it's a beginner, at this at that point, you probably don't even really know what you're going to want to do as far as investing into it, like getting a $5,000 MacBook Pro, and you don't really know if you want to do it for real. So, I'm not going to suggest a Mac or PC on that, but you do need a, a, a MIDI controller, an audio interface, and a computer. If you that's if you want to be able to play. If you want to be able to just if you just want to do point click, because there's some there's some producers out there like Nick Meyer and Autumn Cat, they can make a beat on FL Studio with their mouse. So right. it, it's, it's like I said, it's not the gear, it's the ear. You can get you a small uh <clears throat> One of these small babies right here. And I love this keyboard. This is one of my favorite MIDI controllers. And I got the bigger version. But when I'm on the go, I put this in my bag. I put my push in my bag. I put my interface in my bag and my laptop. And I got a whole workstation right there. And I can pop up anywhere and do a whole production in my book bag. And my book bag is it's really big, though, but it's, it's really big, but I can put everything in there that I need to need to um to work with, and you'll be good to go. So you, as long as you get a controller, it can be the um if you're a keyboard based producer, if you know how to play or whatever, you can get you that little controller right there. You can get your mic uh machine micro if you want to play the pads. You get your machine MK2. You can get you a um uh what's the other joint? The Atom. You can even go with that if you're gonna go with Studio One. So so. It just depends on what type of production you want to do. Because if you don't want to do any of that, you want to skip an MPC, skip a, I mean, skip a um, computer and all that, you can just go straight to a live. Get you a straight MPC live, and you can create everything right there on this thing right here. You don't even need the, the, the computer part. It's just there. Right. So it just depends on what type of pr- production you're trying to do. You're trying to go all the way in and with the keys and everything. You can plug a keyboard into this. You can plug an M32 into the back of this. Yep. I say the other so, thing is um, uh, knowing what platform or what what program you want to use. Like, off, off, uh, well, when you in beginning stages, you probably you, you probably don't know what you want to work in. But the, if you fell in love with watching a bunch of Logic Pro videos, then you have to go to Mac because Logic is obviously proprietary yeah. to uh, yeah. to Macs or whatever. Um, 
but just like Snipe, you know, Max, he said five thousand. I mean, you can. There's cheaper Max. You, you yeah, know, yeah, it's, it's cheaper. It's cheaper. You definitely, you know. But it, yeah. but but then again, it, it if you're paying five thousand, yeah, you you definitely need to be serious, and that's where power comes in, and you know, mm-hmm. for a beginner, you're not spending five thousand dollars anyway. Nah, so. nah, nah. Troy say I, I'm I don't like Mac. I'm a PC person. <laughs> that's what's up. That's what's <laughs> up. <laughs> hey, whatever whatever tools y'all, it, it's 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 whatever gets the workflow going. That's yeah, uh, yeah. Like Snipe keeps saying, it's 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 not about it's not about the gear. It's, it's about you. It's the gear, man. I mean, it's the ear. It ain't it's the, the ear. ear. Yeah, that's because, like I said, I started out on um, what is it, PC, and I was making beats. I did the streaming, the videos that you were talking about. The dude was saying earlier, you did some on Golden Kingdom, and it did, and you was rocking with it. I did that on PC when I did the Machine Masters video. Um, when they did the cook up live, I did it on PC. When I converted to Mac, it didn't just automatically like, oh, he got a Mac now. We're gonna get him extra sauce. <laughs> no, <laughs> I still had to go in and do what I do. You know what I'm saying? How often do I use my expansion? Oh, that's a great question. After I do the expansion, I'm pretty much done with it. I really don't even want to look at it no more. I wait until. Like, say, for instance, Pure Drip. Once Pure Drip came out, because it takes it, it takes so long to put those things together. So I've heard them over and over and over for the for three months straight. That's all I'm listening to is boom. I'm hearing that every day for two, three months. So when it's out, it's out. But then it always turns it comes around the way I'm like, oh, man, I need to use my own joint. And I go back and I'm like, oh, oh, I made that joint. Okay. <laughs> so, it's, so it's like I go discover somebody else's. But immediately when it comes out, I, I don't even touch that joint. It's like I'm tired of it. Because I'm once it's out, I'm like, good. I'm going to move on to something else. Because it's so tedious when you're creating that joint. It's like kind of like when people do albums. They create an album and they be like, I haven't even listened to my own album after I put it out. Because you've listened to it over and over and over and over again for three, four months. So... It, it it I use it once I get back around to it, but once it's fresh out the press, nah. Yeah, that's what's up. Marcus uh, Marcus makes a good point on here on YouTube. He says Studio One runs great on both Macs and PC. I think that's I think that's a a caveat to Studio One um, mm-hmm. as to why I selected that because I can collaborate with people using either pc or mac platforms it's just a file so um and that's that's most most of the dolls are like that like yeah it's just logic logic is the only one that has to be secluded from everybody um Mm -hmm. i don't even understand it like apple could have so many people using that that program but hey it is what it is i get it i guess and and when studio one came out studio one came in with the underdog the underdog mentality. Mm. So they wanted to be effective on PC because nothing else was on PC for real. Everything else was like Mac, 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 Mac. You had Logic, you had um, Cubase. I think Cubase was on PC, but Cubase is basically Studio One. Right. Um, but it was no really, it was the only people, ever, and FL wasn't popping like that. People were using it, but it wasn't as popular as it is now. So it was like, okay, this territory is open to to take over. So I think when they first started, I think they were trying to be the logic of PC. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. If you think about if you think about it from that perspective, then that would explain why a lot of the stuff that was going on with what they were doing in the beginning, you could do it like a PC, the the the, the PC um, integration with the DAW. You couldn't really tell the difference between PC and Mac. And I think that's how I was able to convert to Mac so easy because I was using Studio One, and then they were they they had the ability to bring those short you you had the ability to bring those shortcuts over from the other doll into your doll, so that the learning curve wasn't as stiff as other dolls. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You don't yeah. have to learn all the different shortcuts. It was already good. Man, whoo, man, bro, I appreciate it, man. 
I definitely appreciate it. This was this was amazing. Cool, cool, no problem, brother. So if anyone else don't have any questions, we're gonna we're gonna end here. Hey man, tell everybody where they can where they can find you and all that uh, good you, stuff. You can find me on all social media platforms at Snipe Young, S N I P E Y O U N G. You can go check out my website at snipeyoung.com. Um, hit me in the inbox, hit me on the DMs and all that junk. I, I normally get back to people on Facebook. You know, if you send a message, if if it's if we're not friends, it's gonna send it to that little weird little screen. So if I don't get right back to you, then hit me up and tell me, yo, I've been trying to hit you up, and I can go check it because I don't never, I really don't even see that screen until I go look at that screen. That's what's up. <clears throat> so but, so. So if you if you had like something that you wanted to share, like like word of encouragement or like I don't know, um advice to up and coming producer trying to get out of here, like what what would that be? Uh it only takes one yes. You hear all the no's you want, it only takes one yes. All the no's don't even matter when you hear that one yes. Many times I've heard people say no, 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 or don't even say anything, but you take that as a no. When I got a phone call to say something about you got two records on Chris Brown, or when I get a phone call to say you got seven records on Empire, or you got Sophia Red song, you got that those yeses outweigh all of the times that I heard, nah, bro, that John Wack. Mm mm. Mm mm. No response, no reply. You know what I'm saying? So you only need one. One yes. Don't don't get discouraged because even in the darkest point of night, the next day is the morning time. You know what I'm saying? So the sun comes out at that darkest point. When it gets to the darkest, guess what? The sun coming right up the next morning. So you got to think about it from that perspective. Man, it's it's hard. I'm I don't even want to do music no more. I was at that spot November 2016. Mm-hmm. Won a Grammy February. Wow. So it's like. Like I'm saying this, and I'm not just saying it to just say it. I'm telling you this because it's the truth. You'll be at your darkest spot, even with placements. Like man, ain't my but my placements ain't like okay. For example, example, you'll have placements, but you be like, I ain't got no hits though. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got no singles though. I ain't got no four number ones though. When you get four number ones. I ain't got six number ones though. When you get six. I ain't got twelve number ones. So it's always gonna be some. You know what I'm saying? So even if you have plat um. Um, platinum plaques and gold plaques and Grammy Awards and American Music you still can find yourself um, fighting being in a space where you feel like nah man I don't want to do this no more but you got to remember them no's don't mean nothing to that yes exactly that's what's up that's what's up Snipe man I appreciate it once again man answering all of the all of the questions and i appreciate all of you guys that came on live with us all your your questions and uh some of the things there were other there were other mentions in in the comments and i appreciate that i want to let you guys know that i read them some of you guys was giving shots out and and appreciating either or and it is well appreciated on both ends trust me so uh anyway uh in case you guys don't know we have uh, shirts available for you guys uh, you know if you want to uh, take advantage of uh, the creative movement here you can go and uh, uh, purchase your t-shirt and uh, yeah look fly like me as as I do on these streams and uh, I gotta get Snipe a, a shirt uh, I, 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 <laughs> I'm listening to him tell me he, I've been saying that for a while uh, but uh, I yeah, for <laughs> yeah, okay, for a year, snipe. Uh, uh, he correct me. I've been telling him that for a year, and I'm going to finally get him a shirt. Um, but I, I have, I have some some other things, some other ideas I wanted to send to you, bro, because I need you to rock that. But uh, anyway, once again, I appreciate you guys for logging in. Um, I had fun. I hope you guys enjoyed yourself. All of the things that were shared. Um, stay tuned. Hey, we doing this all the time. Um. Hopefully, I can keep this going on Facebook and YouTube. I'm not really sure. I'm going to listen back and see if I want to keep doing it that way or we just go back to streaming straight on, on YouTube. But uh, anyway, with with that being said, we're going to end it here. Remember, I'm Ellip from Creative Sound. Remember, music is our you the artist. Pick to picture. Stay creative. Stay creative without rules. And remember to 
stay safe out here guys stay safe and um remain creative that most of all all right